been a been a bit of a week. Yeah, it has. That's right, Grady. I concur, Grady. Yeah. I agree. Things happen. Remember last week when we were all just like dunking on being dead? Being dead. That was a week ago. It feels like like a month ago. We no. had no idea what was waiting for us. We had no fucking idea. We no no fucking no clue. And then what happens? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> We just night off and let Greedy yell at the camera for half an hour. I would make so much money. Probably be more therapeutic for everybody. Arr. Silly boy. Are, do you ever just lately, like, and when I say lately, I mean like the past four years, mm -hmm. you ever just look at your cat and feel an overwhelming sense of envy? <laughs> Sometimes. Because they don't have to worry about any of this night. Sometimes. Their biggest problem is whether or not you're giving them treats enough. It's. I can't even begin to describe this. We I'm not even going to try to tackle it. We we all saw one of the worst things in our lifetimes, and we'd already been through one like about 20 years ago. So we had another one. So now we're in the gaslighting stage. Yeah. Your your like abusive family member is like yeah I know. I beat the shit you and betrayed everybody. Mm. But now it's not the time for blame. We all just need to like come together and heal. And if you don't do that, I'm going to beat the shit out of you again. Seriously. Oh. This week we are going to have the, the first ever in American history second impeachment of one president. And it's going to pass too. Yeah. We've never and had to do that before. We don't know what happens. Because, you know, Ted Cruz is like, but but his balls are so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to night and the night psycho my state sent in who's like, I'm gonna carry my glock to Congress. A little mad today. I we're all kind of a little mad today. It's just both definitions. Shh. Oh, la, la. Fuck. But and I don't know. This shouldn't be comforting, but it kind of is. Other stupid things happen that were not related yeah. in any way. Like I mean, it is a little comforting that people just go on being stupid. Yeah, in other ways, which are just sort of comforting, I guess. Is that the wrong word? Do you think people will still be just being dumb nices in the new Civil War? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah like, absolutely. look at this dumb nice. He tried to smuggle 64 dildos across the Jesus land border. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> with that let's get the freaking intro going holy shit each week Catherine the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? It's it's so weird that what we're doing this is kind of the palate cleanser this shouldn't yeah. be the palate cleanser. No, this shouldn't be the comfort food. But that's what we've, that's what, what's happening. It's like, you remember when you had the microwave Hormel chili? Yeah. That's the comfort food now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. All right. Well, your first story up here. Um, This is just serendipity, but it doesn't like you. Um, world's unluckiest burglars arrested after pocket dialing police during robbery. 
Oh no. He's from London. Um, two hapless burger bur burgers burglars have been arrested in the UK after accidentally pocket dialing the police during their crime. An officer in Staffordshire, Central England, labeled the thieves as the world's unluckiest burglars. He said one of the pair had mistakenly sat on his phone and rang 999, the UK's emergency number, allowing officers to hear the crime in progress and ultimately listen in on their colleagues arresting them. <laughs> um, <laughs> received call detailing their antics up to the point of hearing our patrols arrive and arrest them. I feel like I don't understand how people do so much butt dialing in this day and age when you can put right? your phone to sleep. Yeah, right? Like before you put it in your pocket, just put it to sleep. And even if you don't put it to sleep, you know, just don't you lock the screen? Yeah, like even if it's not asleep, I have to open mine with my thumbprint. Although I guess you can still emergency on my ass. You can still emergency dial a locked phone. True. But I just feel like it shouldn't be as easy as it seems to be. The other thing is, who is putting a smartphone in their back pocket? While committing a crime. Like, uh, the fuck? Like, they ain't, they're, you gonna break that. I mean, I do shove it in my back pocket if I'm walking around a store or something. You gonna but... break that. Not while I'm doing anything strenuous, like I put it in my back pocket while I'm walking around Costco. <laughs> you want to get grill glass in your butt? No, because here's the thing. I wear women's jeans, which the pockets are set up such that if I try to sit down with something in my back pockets, it will it will slide out. So I don't I don't have to worry about sitting on things because I don't have real pockets. Yeah, I mean when i when i i have i have cargo pants i admit it i'm not ashamed and when i go out i don't put my phone in like my hip pockets i put it in like my knee pocket where i'm not gonna you know sit on it oh, it's I, a, it's a, I, I couldn't put my phone in my hip pocket if i wanted to yeah because some sometimes they, they're, they're just there for show which is yeah. the weirdest fucking thing but who's who's putting the fucking phone that it, it's bad. Just shut it off. As much as they crime. fucking cost. Yeah. And yeah, it's, why are OK? The thing about phones these days is they are walking evidence gathering devices. They know where you're going, who you're going with, how long you were there. When the whole just all of it. I asked Dan out loud today if he wanted to order Domino's for dinner because he had because he's working on a big project and he was kind of tired. Mm -hmm. And ten minutes later, he got a Domino's ad on Facebook. <laughs> we didn't type anything. Didn't I just type said anything. the word Domino's out loud. Coincidence? I don't know. All right. Ah, uh, moving along. This this is. A whole lot of why why are you making us deal with this shit? And it's Florida, of course. I mean, because we've worked retail and we've had someone come in and for no goddamn reason just turn everything upside down. <sighs> just just the entire day gets just that that is the rest of the day, is that person. Yep. That's what the they are imposing themselves on you, which is a feat. But uh, Naples man calls 911 about McDonald's order and says he has cocaine, quote, in his butt. And the cocaine, a man hinted as he was being loaded into the back of a Collier County Sheriff's car. Deputies asked him to clarify. Quote, I have cocaine in my butt, 56-year-old uh, Mustafa uh, Waradi said. Waradi had called 911 three times early Wednesday morning from the McDonald's. Uh, he said he had they had gotten his burger order wrong twice. Well, clearly we need the police there on this yeah, one. Yeah, it's not, it's not a 911 problem. 911 is not customer service. It's no. not. 
you want it to be, it's not. They, they, they're, you can't speak to them. Were you the, hoping they would come and arrest somebody for making your burger wrong? Because that's not a crime. <laughs> like, what the um, when deputies arrived at the McDonald's, employees said Wardy had been yelling and cursing at staff over his mistaken order, and they wanted him taken from the premises. Wardy said he wouldn't leave until his burger was fixed. The deputy told him again he had to leave. Quote, fine then, take me to jail, I'm not leaving. Okay, when you say take me to jail, it's not like, it's not like that passive-aggressive shit you do with people, yeah. you know? They don't play that. They're not going to no. like be like, no, I don't want to take you to jail. Let's be no, they'll do that. They're like, okay, fine. Let's go. Okay, bet. It's cool. Let's go. Um, and they don't give a fuck how you like your burger in jail. Deputy escorted the disgruntled cu customer from the burger joint. Upon searching his pockets, they found marijuana folded in a napkin. And while he was being placed in the patrol car, he then admitted to having another drug tucked away in his crack. Wardy was taken to the jail center, but the deputy told Wardy he would need to be medically clear before being admitted. Um, quote, watch what you do to me. You'll be sorry, he said. He combated both the deputy and medical help. Um, deputy had to load Wardy on the stretcher a second time because he kept trying to get up. <laughs> Leg shackles were finally placed on him. While at the hospital, he continued to be aggressive toward healthcare workers and deputies. I'll have your job. I will sue you. I'm from New York. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't actually fucking scare people. Especially not in fucking Florida. Now, Not the insanity capital of the world. Here is the utterly baffling part. Charges mention nothing of the alleged cocaine Wardy said was hidden in his rear end. Sounds like he snorted it all and forgot. I mean, if 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 you're into ass play, this is not how you get it. This is not, it's not dude, my dude. But also when you are littered with illegal drugs, <laughs> maybe don't be the one calling the cops. Like seriously? Especially for a shit reason. Don't be the one Fuck. filing a frivolous report and then volunteering to go to jail. I love th this article. Is the only, you know where all the information from this article came from? That deputy was filling it out of fucking report. He was writing down all of this shit because he's like, I don't, I, I am going to have a record of this yeah. motherfucker. This is not my fault. I also don't understand how many of these people like this we get because like, I'm a pretty fucking picky eater. You can ask this poor guy. Like, <laughs> I won't eat anything. <laughs> but if I, if I go to McDonald's and I order my burger with no pickles and I get it and there's pickles on it, you know what I do? I just take the fucking pickles off and I give them to him. <laughs> and then I go on with my fucking life because it's not that big a deal. I don't happily tell a deputy I have cocaine in my ass. No. <laughs> when apparently it's McDonald's with these people and I'm like, and apparently there's nothing they at McDonald's that they can fuck up that bad. That it's more inedible. Yes, uh, let's head to Minnesota. It's normally Minnesota. Yeah, this, this is uh, normally better up there, but not this week. This is more of please let people just do their fucking jobs. Why? Why? Why you gotta? Why you gotta do this? Sheriff intoxicated man in skid steer goes after utility workers near Tassel. What's a skid steer? That's the picture of it right there in the in the in the article. It's like a little kind of a forklift kind of thingy. There it's it is. like a smart car forklift. Well, it's it's sort of. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like a toy forklift. Man's in custody after allegedly using a skid steer in a confrontation with utility workers in Meeker County. The encounter between the man and utility workers happened around 10 a.m. Tuesday, um, which reports that a 67 year old Dassel man threatened workers at a cell tower site. Uh, the man is accused of using a bobcat skid steer to try and flip over equipment the utility workers were using, then threatening to overturn their work trucks. 
Why? Deputies responded to the report located the man. While he was on his way back to the house, the 67-year-old believed to be under the influence of alcohol. Oh. According, right, according to the sheriff's office, the man was, quote, upset the workers were out there, so he confronted them. What? I mean, do you, do you like having utilities? Hey. sometimes they have to work on them. Hey, why are you there? <laughs> you, I didn't say you could be there. Well, sir, have you noticed that the power's out? You fuck your whole block? I don't fucking care. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Man, they're trying. These guys, and I've been in this repair position before. These guys, they're out there in the company truck. They're trying to do their fucking job. And then all of a sudden, from fucking nowhere, here comes this dude with fucking heavy equipment threatening to fuck up the work truck. And that's not even counting fucking Boomer Bob, who worked for Bell Atlantic 50 years ago, so wants to tell you how to do your job. I just... Where... Why did... Who is 60... 67 years old? Who gets... Like, I know we've all been sitting in our houses for almost a year now, and we're bored, and we're grumpy, but this is not the solution. I know we're all day drinking and we've all put on 15 pounds mm -hmm. and we're mad about it, but this is not the answer. He's going out there with fucking heavy machinery, drunk, fucking with people. This, I mean, I don't understand. How did this plan come to, I have uh, drunk logic. It, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird thing because yeah. when you're drunk, everything you're doing makes perfect oh, yeah. sense. Totally. Until you sober up and you're like, why the fuck did I... What the... What? If you remember. Where did this, where did this mounted horse head come from? So, yeah. there must have been some good reason in drunk logic to do this. But I cannot... Does it say what time of day it was? 10 in the morning. 10 a.m. So this dude was... That drunk at 10 a.m. Got up and started at it. He's in it to win it. <laughs> You've already made some excellent life choices today, sir. <laughs> we're, we're, we're off to a championship start. Uh, <laughs> more Florida. Because, <laughs> of course, more fucking Florida. This is from New Year's Eve. Do you know what an airboat is? No. It's it's essentially, it's a boat that goes out on the water, got a big-ass fan in the back, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you're supposed to cruise over the water, the fan blows you along, it's an airboat. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, it's not is meant... Is like what your grandfather built with a jet engine? <laughs> Not a jet engine, a biplane engine. Okay. Yeah. The same idea? Yeah. Okay. Man rides airboat. I thought I said this to you. Oh, I didn't hit enter. Mm -hmm. Man rides airboat on neighborhood streets. <laughs> Not the water. Florida man who rode his airboat through the streets of his neighborhood on New Year's Eve threatened to kill deputies. They were <laughs> taking him into custody. Someone's ready for our new Mad Max dystopia. Deputy said they were called to Mimosa Avenue Thursday and saw a man later identified as Joseph Prohaska, 40, riding an airboat on the streets before pulling it into a yard. Public information officer said Prohaska knocked over trash cans and was shooting off fireworks during the incident. So, New Year's Eve, we're getting out of 2020. Everybody's taking their sigh of relief. And then, in the dead of the fucking night. <laughs> Here comes. Woo! I can only imagine that was. Here comes Psycho Joe. You, you're shooting fireworks off your fucking airboat and fucking. Fuck all the fucking. If you're going to do that and you don't have a dude playing an electric guitar that's also a flamethrower on the front, don't even fucking. <laughs> What's the point? Don't even talk to me. 
Don't if you if you don't have don't talk to me. Don't honestly. I okay. Uh, as deputies were on the scene, they said Prohaska turned the airboat on and started to rev the engine. He was placed under arrest, but then began making threats when deputies also tried to take his father into custody. Well, don't take your dad on a fucking drunk airboat ride. How fast can those things even go? On the water, they can go pretty fast. On land, I don't know. Like he's revving his engine at the cops. Can he outrun the cops on that thing? I I I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Who I just fucking airboat? What? Florida. I. Uh, how? I, all right, all right, all right. I want to know. How did he bring it from the water? Did he just have it laying around? Like, did this happen near the water? No, Orlando's in like the, where is this? Momo, I don't know. Brevard County, Florida. It's it's off, it's, it's near Tampa. Is that near the water? Yeah, Tampa's near the water. Okay. Tampa Bay. Is, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not great at geography. I'm okay. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, I, I could be I could be wrong. I think Brevard County was Brevard County is near um Tampa. I used to live there. But like why not yeah. just do this in your pickup truck? Cuz we all know you have a pickup. He's got a pickup. Why an I'm air- looking at the fucking picture and I know you have a pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> you got a pickup truck face and you live in Florida. So why the boat? An airboat of all fucking things. Like I- that's not going to be okay. No. And you don't take your dad with you. It might have been dad's idea. <laughs> it could have been dad's. It's Florida. It could have been dad's idea. Airboats are primarily used in the Everglades. On water, they can use, they can reach 60 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Grace Bruce has said his driver's license was probably suspended. Point. Point. That's not a workaround, guys. No, it's like, hey. Your driver's license is suspended. That doesn't mean you can just take a different vehicle on the road. <laughs> that's not how it works. Like, that's not a gotcha. I, I would like to point out you guys are just talking about drunk logic. Yeah. The last story is... I have never been this bored. <laughs> And I have been very bored. It's been a boring year. I mean, not boring year, but, you know, we've all been sitting in our house being bored. I've been bored. I've never been burned down an abandoned hotel board. Johnsonburg, Pennsylvania. An Elk County man said he was curious and bored when he set fire to the old Johnsonburg Hotel last week. Johnsonburg police say Andrew Higdon uh, is facing numerous felonies, including arson, reckless burning, risking catastrophe, burglary, and criminal trespassing. Authorities were called to the fire to the three-story hotel. Um, after arriving at the scene, a Johnsonburg police officer said he saw smoke billing out the top floor. Multiple fire crews were called in to help. Meanwhile, police say Higdon exited a nearby auto garage and approached police Claiming to have seen a man exit the hotel right before the fire started. Four eyes on me went that way. According to the complaint, Higdon provided police with a very detailed description of the suspect. Details, police say that Higdon wouldn't have been able to see from his vantage point about 100 feet away. Owners of the nearby garage told officers that Higdon had stopped into the garage shortly before the fire and was drinking alcohol. A lot of drunken shit this week. Owners told police that Higdon had disappeared several times at 15 minute intervals. According to police, fire crews were eventually able to extinguish the flame, but the hotel was badly damaged. Uh, police say Higdon never left the scene of the fire and appeared nervous the entire time. Officers interviewed Higdon later and he explained that he had been drinking that day, entered the hotel before lighting several curtains and a pile of mattresses on fire with his lighter. He said he made sure nobody was inside. Thanks. He admitted to trying to cover his tracks by calling 911 and claimed it because he was curious and bored. I mean, I guess I respect your devotion. 
because even when the scene is crawling with cops, you stayed to watch how it played out. Like, fuck, man. And it, it tried to throw him off the scent in the worst way. But also, like, <clears throat> you can't just set things on fire that aren't yours. <laughs> we kind of covered this one several times. Like, I know I had some questions about why you're not able to burn shit that belongs to you. But you definitely can't burn shit that doesn't belong to you. Uh, yeah. Even just, if you're bored. Who, all right. So he gets drunk. He wanders into an abandoned hotel, which is like, you couldn't pay me. Right? Like, it's already, already bad enough. I've watched all 15 seasons of Supernatural, and no. No. I mean, an abandoned hotel. That just sounds like an, a recipe for danger. Like, people in the channel, like, a pile of mattresses. Yeah, they probably just had them left over from the hotel and didn't want to clean yeah, them out. They, so they just take all that shit out. They just threw them in a corner. This is how white people die in horror movies. So he gets drunk. By getting drunk and going into abandoned buildings. And then he decides, this sucks. This is boring. You know what's not boring? Fire. <laughs> I wonder... Can I make fire? And the answer is yes. With a lighter? Yes, you can. You you have made Someone fire. Someone makes a good point. Maybe there maybe there was a ghost and he was trying to deal with that. Maybe he's also watched all 15 seasons of Supernatural. Got to burn the bones. But the Winchesters always take the fuck off after that. They don't <laughs> They're in the Impala and they're fucking gone by the time the cops arrive at the arson. That's the part you missed. I'm pretty sure had he just, you know, fucked off, he might have, this might have just like been like, well, shit. But no, he had to stay behind and can cut. He had the perfect alibi. I saw the yeah. person. No, no, that never works. Okay. It never works. That never works. Because they, they will, they will break you down in interrogation. The, Especially since you were just wandering in and out of a public place nearby and acting shady already. I will say that as someone who used that excuse as an eight-year-old, it doesn't work. <laughs> See, and you learned that as an eight-year-old. Exactly. Like, this is like the family circle. Who did it? Not me. Not me. <laughs> it was the one-armed man. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it was Antifa. <laughs> there you go. Antifa first. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> I have never been this bored in my life. No. I mean, there are so many other things you could do. Like, go so window many. shopping. It's like So many other things. Just... <sighs> Sit Break in the, your own stuff. Sit in the park and watch the birds. Train spotting. I don't fucking know anything but fucking arson. Take a nice walk. Seriously. There, there, there are many options. Like, watch, watch cat videos on YouTube. When you feel the urge to burn things down, consider your options. Yeah. There's other things you can do. Play Among Us. I hear that's popular with the kids. <laughs> I guess this is the first thing we've learned this week is that um, fire is not recreational. Think back to your mother. Every time you told your mother was bored, you were bored, she gave you chores. She did. It, yeah. Oh, you're bored? Go clean your room. That was the... That was the, the uh, in family version of if you if you if you have time to lean you got time yeah. to yeah it was, yeah mom never said set fire to an abandoned building did she I don't think mom would if your mom did say that I hope you're in therapy yeah <laughs> um uh Um. Oh, uh, we learned that an airboat not designed for the ground 
It's, I feel like no kind of boat is designed for road travel. Yeah. I, and I'm not a boating expert, but and, I'm just... You don't get... It's not like a loophole. It's not like the perfect way to get around. Like, they say you couldn't drive a car. Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> no. Check me. Um, we've learned that maybe if you're day drinking... 10 a.m., you're already drunk, get, getting on heavy machinery, it's time to take it back a notch. It's... Yeah. Spot it back just a little bit. Oh. You should uh, perhaps switch from alcohol to pot. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Nobody... I All right, we say that. I, I, we, we, it's kind of the old stereotype. Nobody got belligerent and, and pissy on, on, uh, on marijuana. That's not entirely true. But... I bet you're but not. It's a lot less likely. Yeah, I bet you, you you're not. You're going to be a little too distracted by the everything to attempt to operate heavy machinery. Kind of going to bore the shit out of you at that point. Um, <laughs> we've learned if you call nine one one, not customer service, and also if you tell the cops you have cocaine in your butt, that might you might think you're in for an exciting time but not for the reasons you think that also if you're going to be the one calling the cops try not to be the one committing the felonies <laughs> like it's I, I don't know how people think they can they are like a walking crime they bring the cops pay it no you can't get me for this i called you for something else that's the yeah, rules it, no, that's no. Not- honey no you get, how that works. You get their attention, and it's it's yeah. you know. And finally, we've learned um, maybe don't keep your phone in your back pocket. Maybe I feel like just turn your phone off if you're going to do crime, <laughs> right? Because also, like, you don't need somebody calling you in the middle of crime. <laughs> just turn it off. Is like you're going to leave a. Perfect... And I say that because I carry my phone in my back pocket, so I can't really endorse that lesson because I do it. But, but just, you, you know. But you're not doing crime, Tara. I'm not doing crime. No. When I'm doing crime, I leave my phone at home. That is true. 